in investment actually are a huge amount of investment and a lot of it gets down to people's uh, love and passion and dedication and and friends of groups are really really key for a lot of our management um, uh, uh, issues one to provide the initial movement and, and pressure to get to get policy going in a certain direction but also to actually do a lot of the day-to-day -day, uh, on the ground type stuff so without further ado I'll, I'll introduce Phil so we can get going so um, uh, I think Phil has talked to every class most classes for about the last uh, 10 12 years so the first couple trips start doing this I just brought you guys up and I did a poor job of interpreting the elephant seals and all that kind of good stuff. And one year we bumped into him and he's like, why don't you tell us like next year and we can like, you know, meet with you guys. And we said, okay. And so they've kindly um, uh, done so every year. So without without further ado, Phil Adams is gonna tell us about uh, the school elephant seal uh, uh, haul out and all the, the Vista Point thing here. I got some photos here, so you might want to get a little closer if I can show them to you. Uh, what I want to start out with really is their life at sea because that's really their home. Uh, the males, big males, spend about eight months a year at sea. The females and adolescents about ten months a year at sea. When they're at sea, they dive all the time. Even when they're migrating, they don't swim along the surface. And when they leave here, the males go as far north as the Aleutian Islands. Females go farther out to sea. But what's amazing is they all do it alone. So they all have their own navigational skills and their own biological clock to let them know when to come back. So it's pretty darn amazing. Um, traveling 2,000 miles away and then coming back and finding this food ring, pretty darn it's, I mean, When it gets a lot of people here at the bluff, I say, and some of us are gonna have a hard time finding our car in the parking lot. Anyway. <laughs> So when they're at sea, they dive all the time. And a uh, typical dive is one or 2,000 feet down when they're migrating or when they're foraging. And they'll come to the surface after about 20 or 30 minutes to spend a couple of minutes and they'll go right back down again. <laughs> What's interesting is they never come ashore once they leave here. So that means they sleep underwater. And they've been known to stay underwater as long as two hours and go as deep as almost 6,000 feet. So you can see how much deeper they go than a harbor seal or a sea lion. And uh, two hours underwater. You know, you'd think they'd have to have a huge lung capacity. In fact, they don't. Their lungs are no larger than a land mammal. And the interesting thing is, they exhale before they die. So they don't have to defeat that big <laughs> air sac. They're sort of negatively or neutrally buoyant. A couple of swipes with their rear flippers, and then they glide. So it's a very efficient way of moving through the water. The reason they're able to stay underwater so long, they've got about twice as much blood volume as a land mammal. And in that blood, there's about 50% more hemoglobin. That's what stores oxygen. In their muscle, there's a similar component, hemoglobin, called myoglobin that stores oxygen. They've got a lot of it. And then they also have a dive reflex that constricts their circulation. So blood is diverted away from the outside of their bodies to just the core organs. Oxygen lasts longer that way, and they don't have to use up a lot of energy reheating the blood because it doesn't come in contact with that cold, cold water. But they don't have nutrients available to grow new hair and skin and lose all the time. That's why they have to come ashore once a year and molt, where it looks like they've got a really bad sunburn. <laughs> but it's a catastrophic molt, and it happens, uh, it's a separate migration. So they migrate <laughs> twice a year. So they probably swim, you know, 10 to 12,000 miles every year by themselves. Pretty darn amazing. When you think about it, they spend most of their lives at sea underwater in this pressure-laden, pitch-black environment and still remain amphibious. To me, that's incredible. It really is. So, as far as here on the rookery, there are three events that happen. Birthing and mating, the molting that I showed you the picture of, and then the fall haul out, which is what we have right now. And the fall haul out is nothing but adolescent males. And I'll explain that a little later. But during the birthing and mating season, that's what the beach looks like. And that's at the south end. And you can see it's very, very crowded. And also, if you're real patient then, you might get to see a puppy in board. 
It doesn't take very long though. I mean, the infant's shaped like a torpedo. So we're talking five minutes. 